Good morning. Nine o'clock. Tuesday, June sixth. <clears throat> June sixth, D Day, right? <clears throat> Brother Walters, good to see you. Looks like things stay busy for you. No, retri no retirement for Brother Walters. That's good. <clears throat> Mr. Phil, glad you're on here today. All right. I think, uh, I think Facebook has flagged me. Um, not everyone gets notified anymore about me being on here. Maybe they just decide they didn't want to be notified. <laughs> uh, so, look at this. My wife has another torture piece of equipment here. Look at that. If you can put that blade out there, put a guy's finger down and roll it across there like that. I don't know. She's got all kinds of crazy things out here. <laughs> she has decided that she wants to uh, sew again. She hasn't sewn in several years. I bought her a new uh, sewing machine, I think for Christmas. And she is now, she has decided to... Uh, make a quilt for uh, the the new baby coming so she is busy at that look at this she's got little squares made making little squares she's just uh, been a busy little beaver so <laughs> <clears throat> except the the problem the problem is my studio has now become a, uh, a sewing uh, studio, you might call it. So, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, it's a good day, isn't it? So, yeah, I think there's some Facebook algorithms or something. I, I would be curious to know uh, if, you know, the because we just took a nosedive, like, all of a sudden. You know, we were, we were running up about 25 to 30 watching uh, live and then a couple hundred uh, watching, you know, through the, through the day or whatever, sometimes even up to 300. And uh, now we're down to about 70 or so. Uh, we have about 12 uh, that watch it live. Um, so I'm sure I've been flagged along the way. The, the the little commies get out there and and have their little uh, algorithms and hear certain words probably like commies <laughs> and uh I, they uh, limit you in in uh, who who sees this so but you, you know what god's able to do whatever and he can get the message out if there's someone out there that needs to hear this i'm certain that god can get it to them if he wants to He's more powerful than than the devil and and those that want to follow him. So, you know, it's just a good day, right? So Tuesday, beautiful day. I mean, it's just been a beautiful morning, and um, the rain has helped at least helped me anyway, keeping the dust and the pollen down or whatever. So I've been able to keep the windows open and hear the birds singing and. Um, we have some incredibly fat squirrels out here. I've been feeding them corn, uh, trying to get them to leave the bird feed alone. And, uh, they're like little pigs. I mean, they had eaten a lot of corn every day. So it's fun though. Fun to see them out there. And, uh, anyway, it, it, it's a good day. So, you know, I feel bad for some, some people, uh, I was reading an article this morning that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was being interviewed. There, I, I don't know one of the 
one of the TV programs is doing a documentary on him or whatever, and, and he says that heaven and hell is a fairy tale and that when you're dead, you're dead, and we will not see each other. And, uh, you know, if, if, he, if he's right, then, you know, you're dead, you're dead, right? But what if he's wrong? And I know that he's wrong. And what a grave mistake he is making. And he will be alone, but he will be eternal too. And it'll be eternity in hell. And he will be by himself. And he'll be totally separated from everybody. And he'll be totally separated from God. And he'll be in a place that had been made for the, the angels that had uh, turned away from God and and God will place him there because his choice, that's what he wants. And uh, truly a sad day when Arnold dies and, and ends up in hell for eternity. And that's where he's headed unless he changes his mind on some things and realizes he needs to trust Jesus as a savior. So that, you know, there, there are always those that are the naysayers. There are always those that are... Um, you know, questioning these things. And uh, we just through faith and through confidence know that God is right. So, um, so just keep, keep uh, telling people about Jesus, right? Along the way and, and letting them know that he's real, that his forgiveness is real and sincere and genuine and permanent and uh, how good he is. So Anyway, I'll give you some thoughts. I was kind of all over in some of this today, so it, it'll be one of those. And and also remember, I won't be on here Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Uh, uh, Teresa and I are going back to Iowa to pick up uh, uh, an antique hutch, or I, I don't remember what she called it, but uh, actually she was talking to her mom and dad yesterday, and her dad thinks that it was his grandmother's. So, you know, probably built somewhere back in the 1800s. And so anyway, it's coming home with us. It's been in the family all this time and going to stay in the family. So we're going to make a road trip back and get that and, and see family while we're there and, and uh, uh, stop in and see my mom and dad on the way home too. And, and uh, so it'd be good to, to see some of our aunts and uncles and cousins and and uh that that'll be a good thing so i won't be on here the rest of the week after today okay so anyway i was in i was in uh um uh, it's a hoosier cabinet oh, okay whatever a hoosier cabinet is that's what we're bringing home okay <laughs> all right so I was reading in first Kings, uh, and just in, I was in chapter one today and David is old and, and getting ready to, to pass away. And, uh, he had already said that, uh, Solomon was, was going to be King. And, you know, there are always those in society always has been the case. It's human nature. It's, it's, and it's going to continue to be that way that, there's always going to be those who, who try to, to rise to a position that isn't theirs. And uh, here we have uh, Adonijah, who, who was the brother of Absalom, who has decided that he's going to follow the way of his brother, Absalom, and put himself in as king. And uh, first of all, that wasn't David's will because it wasn't God's will. And so Adonijah really didn't care and had no respect for King David and had no respect for God. And so he tries to place himself in a position where he's not called to be. And uh, be careful with trying to put yourself somewhere where it's not your place and, and just go where God wants you to go and be happy and content where God has you. And, and if God wants to exalt you to something else, let God do it. And don't clamor over other people's backs to get there. And so Adonijah, the brother of Absalom, pushes himself to be king. We and and we see people that follow him. Joab, you know, Joab had been the 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 leader of the military for David all these years and and was always questioning David, always going behind his back, always doing things that that weren't right. And and here he makes a grave 
grave mistake or a, or a horrible decision that ends up costing him his life. And so he has many times been doing things that David has told him not to do. Well, I believe that this was the end of it. And when he did this, that was the end of it. And this causes his, his own death. And so uh, Joab, uh, the leader of the military, and then Abiathar, who is one of the priests. And, and uh, we, we know that uh, not only uh, was, was, uh, was uh, uh, he the, the priest, but there, there was also the other one. And it starts with a Z. And I, I'm, I'm Zadok. Zadok, all right? And so Adonijah was one of the priests. Zadok was the other one. And the thing that, that you'll find later, Adonijah, the priest, then goes with Joab and, and goes with Adonijah. And and, and so, uh, 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 who did I say? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, all right, Abiathar. Not, okay, so Joab and Abiathar go with Adonijah. So I get these names a little bit confused sometimes, but they they are promoting themselves. You know, look, if Abiathar would have been wise and, and had been a godly priest, God would have been telling him, don't you be doing this. As a matter of fact, probably did tell him that, and he just goes on because he wants to promote himself. Well, Abiathar uh, ends up getting cast out as a, as a priest. He doesn't get killed, but Solomon does cast him out. And, that's, and guess what? That's the end of the priestly line of Eli. Remember Eli way back when Samuel was first born? And, and actually, he'd been priest well before Samuel was ever born. And so he was so ungodly. His, his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were... Uh, ungodly reprobates, and and uh, they all ended up dying. And and God came to Eli and said, "Your entire lineage will be destroyed." And well, guess who's the last one of that that uh, lineage? Abiathar. And so, uh, following the following suit of of that generation, and uh, a sad testimony, wasn't it? And to think. The, the sin of Eli has affected this many generations. I mean, I, I just, uh, it's amazing to me. And so, first of all, then make sure that, that you ha have uh, stopped that kind of uh, generational sin. Let it end with you and uh, turn your life over to Christ and and change the 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 future of not only your own life but the lives of generations to follow and, and you know break the chains of of whatever it is that has been generational that isn't good and start doing something different that will bring the blessings of God on your life and just a good reminder to us and and just you know, don't don't be looking for positions that aren't yours. There's always those that that are trying to do that, and don't be one of those that does that. And then remember that your help comes from the Lord in in everything. I, I mean, we get in after you get out of Psalm 119, and now we're in a, a a part of the Psalms right now where that's the reminder. Every one of these Psalms is my help comes from the Lord, right? Psalm 124. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who were on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Can I tell you that whenever you trusted Christ as your savior, no, we're not the chosen nation of Israel, but we are, we, we are now a part of the family of God. And there is some distinction there and there still is some distinction between what we call the church and what we call Israel. But there are many of the promises that Israel's given are, are given to us as part of the family of God. And 
One of those is to know that our help is of the Lord. And he says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He tells us that I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I mean, uh, he's always there. He will give us the strength to, to come through whatever it is that uh, we're tested with. And, and with his help, we'll get there and be what God wants us to be. So always remember that our help comes from the Lord. And it, it it's not going to come from the, the politicians of the day. It's not going to come from the government. It's going to come from the very power of God working in your heart, working in your life, and God is the only one that can turn this country around. And so let's look to him and, and uh, whatever the challenges are of the day and, and whatever we face during the day, we can know that our help comes from the Lord and, and he is always there uh, to help us. So, and, and, and it just gives you a better attitude for the day. You know, it, it just, it, it removes the stresses of the day and you just roll those burdens over onto him and he takes them and and they and they disappear and we can get through life and, and realize that God's got things under control. So much of the anxiety that people are dealing with today it is caused by trying to handle things that you can't handle. And, and you need to learn to give them over to God. And when we give them over to God, then guess what? It relieves a whole lot of stress. And guess what stress does to you? It affects you physically. I mean, it affects you mentally. It affects you spiritually. And so it, it ultimately is a spiritual problem. And so let us be careful and let's make sure that we roll those things over onto God and, and uh, have, a, have a pleasant day today. And, and so let's uh, walk with him, right? And then it also helps us, if our attitude's right, it helps us with the things that we say. Proverbs 16, verse 24. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Isn't that good? Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. You, you know, there, there are a lot of times when uh, people just don't say the things that they ought to say, right? There, there are times when I say things that I shouldn't say and you know, we, we, can, we can destroy people or we can lift people up with what we say, right? Now, <clears throat> I think our church is a wonderful, friendly group of people. And I think we have to work at it. I think you have to work at it every day to be friendlier, you know, to reach out to someone you don't know. Reach out to the one that, that isn't so friendly, you know? I, I mean, go out and, and talk to them, whether they want to be or not, you know? reach out, get them out of their shell and take it as a challenge then, you know? And, and um, but we need to, to give out pleasant words, right? You know, I, I just, let's be careful, you know, with, with those kinds of things. And, and can I also tell you that, that Facebook isn't the place to be posting trash about someone? You know, it, it, matter of fact, there's no place for that. And so let, let us uh, uh, be careful with that and let's control our tongues and let's be friendly and, and let's give out pleasant words that, that God is encouraging us to, to uh, give out to others and it'll help. It, it will be productive and, and it will come to pass if your heart's right with God. And so let, let's be the kind of people that, that God wants us to be. And and in those pleasantries, there are certain things that we ought to do. Well, one of them is never stop sharing the gospel. In, in uh, Acts chapter 4, it says in verse 1, And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple, <clears throat> and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. I mean, there, there are people that are grieved still today, uh, that we as believers are getting out there and preaching the gospel. And, and I find that, I find that to be sad. And, and these people are so blinded that they're grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus, the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them 
And that, that's not in a good way, all right? They grabbed them up and put them in hold under the next day for it was now eventide. How be it, many of them which heard the word believed. And the number of the men was about 5,000. Look, you know, in, in our challenges, and we're in a challenging day, and there are people all over that want to challenge the truth of God, and they want to challenge the absolutes of God's word, and they and they want to challenge the idea that one must be born again to get to heaven, and 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 uh, one must recognize they're a sinner in need of a savior. They don't want to say that anything they do is wrong whatsoever, and and it's a challenging day that we are in. But I'm telling you that that we need to continue even in in the middle of all that chaos and in the middle of all of those challenges, we need to tell people about Jesus and. Even if even if we suffer some kind of persecution, you do not know how powerful that as one goes through persecution is, how powerful that testimony is where you might see 5,000 people saved through your testimony during that time. I mean, those that, that get tested and those that are that are going through the challenges of the day and, and you're just living your life and trying to walk with God, you may not think anything about it. You're just doing the battle and trying to stay right with God. Somebody can be watching you and through your testimony come to trust Christ as their savior. And you may never know that in this side of eternity, but never stop sharing the gospel. And and then remember, it's it. our lives are always about Jesus. That's it. You know, it's not about you. It's not about all this junk that our world is so caught up and so lost in this self-love. And, and it's such a prideful, arrogant, humanistic idea and philosophy that's out there that, you know, we're, we're just got to pamper ourselves all the time. No, you don't. You need to mortify the deeds of the flesh, it tells us. You need to understand, oh, wretched man, what I am. You need to understand how far you can go uh, in your carnality, even as a believer, if you want to pamper yourself and and blame everybody else for your problems and and or blame all, all these medical conditions that people have brought up and phobias that are out there instead of just realizing that you have a spiritual problem, deal with the spiritual side of things you 'll find out that it'll help with many of your uh, many of your physical uh, problems that you have and and because your life is not about you, your life is about Jesus. And it says, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of, of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I'm telling you, uh, it, uh, uh, <clears throat> there is nothing better than keeping it about Jesus. You, you'll find out if you keep your life about Jesus that, that he can help you with the burdens that you have and he can deliver you from the the issues that you have, and, and God can use you greatly, but you need to give it to God, and, and you need to trust Jesus, and then you need to promote Jesus in your life, and, and just live for him. You know, there, there's so often, we get so caught up in ourselves, and so caught up in our own issues, and so self-absorbed in who we are, and, and our little battles that we're having, that it all, we, we end up having some pity party for ourselves, and and then when you talk to somebody, all you can do is tell them about all of your woes and all of your problems and all of your sicknesses and all of the stresses that you have, and you blow the opportunity to tell them about Jesus. You know, we are in such a selfish society, and and so often Christians have fallen prey to that just like everybody else. Quit thinking about yourself and start thinking about Jesus and start thinking about others. And you'll find out it can deliver you from a whole lot of mess that you get yourself into. I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be kind, trying to help you out here, right? And then verse 23, I, lo I love this. It says that after they went to jail, they were finally released to tell them, you don't be doing this anymore. And, and being let go, they went to their own company. Can, 
Can I tell you something that God has given us a church family for support? You're not some lone wolf that can live out on some island by yourself and think that that's where you need to be and that's what you ought to be. It's just not biblical. You need to be a part of a church family somewhere. You need to get plugged into that church family. Are they perfect? No, that family is not perfect. It's just like your regular family. Everybody has their issues along the way. You know what? But God wants us to be plugged into a church family. And and he wants us to spend as much time as we can with each other to encourage each other, to exhort each other, to rebuke each other. And, and, and you know what? With family is you don't walk away from them. You help them. And you don't sit around and just criticize them all the time. You help them. You, you, you try to make the family better. You know, what, what is wrong with people today when all they want to do is criticize the church family? That doesn't work. I'm sorry. It doesn't work. Fix the problems, okay? Don't sit around and gripe about it. Fix the problems that you have, whatever they are. You know, if, if I, I don't know, we're, we're so quick to walk away from church family. You're so quick to be offended by somebody in the church family. You're so quick to, to bring judgment against somebody in the church family. You're so quick to, you, you know, have, have criticisms of, of other people. And you know what I find? I find that those that are really truly working to please and honor God and they're, and they're doing their best to encourage those in the church family, they don't have time to criticize the church family. It's those that sit on the sideline and aren't involved and, and are having pity parties and thinking that either they're a lone wolf and they can do this on their own or they're some pity party thinking that woe is me and, and, and you're thinking about yourself instead of thinking about Jesus and thinking about others, you become a real problem to everybody. And ultimately you become a problem to God. Get it right before God does something about it. And if somebody actually has the character to come to you and say, you need to get this right, you need to quit doing this, don't get mad and don't get all offended about it, just get it right. I mean, we all do that, you know? We, we all, look, there have been times when my wife's had to come to me and say, you know what, you probably ought to watch your attitude with that or, you know, be careful what you're saying here, hon, because you're, you are going to, to say something you shouldn't say and and so what do I do? Get mad and leave my wife because she told me that? And that's what we do in our church families anymore. You know, don't don't let it happen. Guard each other. You know, be willing to to go to fight. You know, go to fight for someone in your church family if somebody starts trashing them. You know, stand up and do the right thing. I mean, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be a family and. And, and, and find the encouragement. You ought to be able to go to that church family and whatever issue that you're having and be able to share it with your family and they will help you. I mean, not, not condemn you, but help you. And, and I, I thank God for our church family. I, I, and, and I praise the Lord for that. And no matter how big it gets, I never want to lose that. And let it, let it be a place where you can come in where you are and will help you get where you need to be. And that's, that's the attitude that we ought to have. And, and so anyway, and then you get into verse 24 here in Acts chapter four. And, and, and we see here a powerful prayer. And so they pray to God, right? So they come together. And the first thing that they do is they start praying. Well, somebody comes to you with some issues in the church family, instead of running to somebody and yakking about it and, you know, uh, gossiping or whatever, why don't we help each other and let's go to the Lord in prayer. And, and they did that. And, and here we see that when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. And so then they pray to God, right? And, and you, you get to verse 31 and, and through 37, and we see the blessings of God answering that prayer and gives them a powerful unity. Now, how how big is this? How big is this church? You know, I mean, we still haven't been scattered yet. We we've had eight thousand people saved over the last uh, few days here, and and are they all included in this? I don't know. I mean, I I don't I don't know. But there there was a a multitude of them, 
And so uh, when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. They're all filled with the Holy Ghost and they speak the word of God with boldness. You know, one of the things that when, when we trust Christ now, we're immediately given the Holy Spirit of God and given boldness to, to speak the truth, right? And not only that, but then it brings about an uncommon unity. And if, if we don't have unity, then we're not going to have the blessings of God. And if you have a group of people that truly are unified and you're not, and you're not in that unity, then it's probably not that whole group of people that's not right with God. It's you. <laughs> you might be the problem. So, ah, anyway, <laughs> hey, it's a good day, right? So I'm a little long, I apologize, but uh, you know what? Let's get out there and let's love, love the Lord like we should. Let's tell people about Jesus. Let's honor and glorify him. Let's stop thinking about ourselves so much and let's start thinking about God. And as we think about God, we're going to think about others and God's going to use us greatly to make an impact in our community, in our world, and, and you're going to see God do some great things. So anyway, it's Tuesday, Lord willing, creek don't rise. I'll see many of you on Sunday. I'll see the rest of you next Monday, Lord willing, and uh, pray for one another. And let's honor and glorify God in what we do. God bless you guys.